السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا أيها المسلمون To the long time listener and first time visitor We welcome you to this episode Now without further ado, let's get into it بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله Alhamdulillah ala ni'matil Islam wa sunnah. Alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has given us a most excellent example in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from the beautiful guidance and and from the beautiful example in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he left for us was that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he began his da'wah with his family. Naam. And it is important and it is a must upon each and every one of us that we also, we give concern to our family as relates to their learning and to their rearing and their upbringing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commands the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inside of his noble book where he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ And to warn your close family members, ma'am. So the da'wah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it began with his family members. And this is why his wife Khadija, radiyallahu ta'ala anha, she's one of the first Muslims. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he obeyed the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَيَنْبَغِ لِلْدَاعِيَ مِنَ الذَّكَرْ وَالْأُنْثَى أَنْ يَبْدَى دَعْوَتِهِمَا so it is important and it is a must that the person who was calling to Allah, male or female, that they begin their da'wah by calling their family, by giving da'wah to their family. To give da'wah to their family, to the good, and to strive to save them from going to the hellfire. Naam. And 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 this is imtithalan, يعني imtithalan لأمر الله سبحانه وتعالى. And this is in obeying and in actualizing and carrying out the command of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. يعني حين قال جل وعلا when Allah جل وعلا He said يا أيها الذين آمنوا قو أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا وقودوا هالناس والحجارة. To the end of the ayah, where Allah سبحانه وتعالى He said. O oh, you who believe, save yourselves and save your families from a fire. A fire whose fuel is men and stones. Naam. To the end of the to the end of this verse. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He commands us to safeguard ourselves and to save our families from the fire. So this necessitates that we have a concern for our families and we have a concern for ourselves first and foremost and then we have a concern for our families that we call them to that which is good وقال علي رضي الله تعالى عنه and Ali رضي الله تعالى عنه he said as relates to this particular verse أدبوهم وعلموهم meaning to uh, discipline them نعم to discipline them and to teach them and to educate them. And this is something that I want us to really reflect on, is that we have to educate our families and we have to discipline them as well, meaning that we cannot allow, allow our children to, as these new wave insane individuals say, raise themselves. Let them decide what they want to do with this and that and let them decide how they want to... And, no, we have to give guidance to our children based upon that which is correct. We cannot allow them to try to figure it out for themselves. They're children. Naam, they're children. And it is quite absurd and hypocritical that the West, in many aspects of life, will say that the children are not old enough to make a conscious decision to do this and to do that. But yet when it comes to things as fundamental as one's gender and so on and so forth, then they'll tell us, no, leave them alone. They, they, you know, they have a right to decide. Uh, what? 
a, 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 someone in second and third grade has a right to decide these life-changing matters. But at the same time, we don't let them drink alcohol. At the same time, we say that they can't own a gun. At the same time, we say they can't drive and operate an auto, auto, yeah, uh, 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 automobile, right? Well, why not? Why not? Why not make some automobiles and retrofit them so that someone in the seventh grade, someone in the fourth grade can drive them? How come we can't do that? Oh, no, no, no. They're not old enough for that. They don't have cognitively. Da, 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 da. But yet they're going to make a life decision as relates to what their gender is. Anyway, the kuffar, let them do what they do. That's fine. But as far as us as Muslims, no. We're not, we're not going for that type of stuff. No. A child is a child. A parent is a parent. The parent has to rear that child and teach that child and educate that child. The child is not going to tell the parent how they're supposed to be doing what they're supposed to be doing. You, do you understand? Now, there's one thing from life experience and so on and so forth that I tell even my grown children is that, listen, I used to be 20 some odd years old. You have never been 40 yet. Do you understand? So there's no way you're going to tell me how the world works and that you know how the world works better than me when I've been here twice as long as you. I've been here twice as long as you. I've been through my 20s. I've been, I've been a teenager before. I've been in my 30s before. You're going to tell me how, how, what, what it means to be a 20 some odd, 30 some odd? No way. Of course not. Of course I know better than you. Been there, done that. You know what I'm saying? But على كل this is the state that we find ourselves in. So we cannot allow our families to be left by the wayside by not disciplining them when they need to be disciplined and by not educating them when they need education. But we have to educate them. وقال ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنه اعملوا بطاعة الله واتقوا الله نعم اعملوا بطاعة الله واتقوا معاصي الله This means that we have to actualize and we have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by actualizing his obedience. And we have to fear disobeying Allah ta'ala and fear his disobedience. وَمُرُّوا أَهْلِيكُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أو بِذِكْرِ And command your family to remember, meaning to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. نعم. وَيُنْجِيكُمُ اللَّهِ مِنَ النَّارِ If you do this, Inshallah ta'ala, Allah ta'ala, he will save you all from the fire. So we have to, if we want to implement this verse, save yourselves and your family from the fire, then we have to educate our families. We have to, yani, first ourselves, be upon the obedience of Allah and fear his disobedience. And then we have to command our families with the remembrance of Allah and establishment of his obedience and to be wary of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we do this, inshallah ta'ala, Allah ta'ala, he will save us from the fire. وَقَالَ مُجَاهِدْ Mujahid, he said, اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَأَوْسُوا أَهْلِيكُمْ بِتَّقُوا اللَّهِ He said, this means to fear Allah and to command your families to fear Allah, to command them and to advise them to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that means exactly that, that we fear Allah and we command our families to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we rear them upon that which is correct and we prevent them from that which is wrong. We encourage them to do that which is correct and we discourage them from doing that which is wrong, that which is haram. So we discourage our children or we should be discouraging our children from imitating the kuffar. We should be encouraging our children to imitate those who are righteous. We have to be commanding our children to establish the prayer and to do that in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded them to do and to never stop praying and to be weary of the abandonment of the prayer due to its severity and due to the detrimental effects it will have upon them in this world and inside of the, the next. وَقَالَ الْحَفْظِ بْنِ كَثِيرِ الْحَفْظِ بْنِ كَثِيرِ He mentions inside of his tafsir وَفِي مَعْنَى هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ يعني, And that which comes showing the meaning and how we properly implement this verse, save yourselves and your family from a fire, he says, is the hadith. Al hadith al ladhi rawahu Ahmed wa wal Abu Dawood wa Turmadi. Naam. And. Naam. And Abdul Malik bin Rabi' al Sabra. And Abihi. And Jaddihi. Naam. And that's very important. This is a hadith that's been collected by Imam Ahmed upon. 
and by Abu Dawood and by a Tirmidhi. And it's from the hadith of Abdul Malik bin Rabi' bin Sabra, who narrated it on his father, who narrated in upon his grandfather. Naam. So the father taught the grandfather, excuse me, taught the father, and then the father taught who? Taught the son. You understand? So this is what? Education. The grandfather taught the father. The father taught his son. You understand? This is how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be educating each other about the religion, if starting with, with who? With our family. It is a statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Murru al-Sabi bil-Salaa idha balagha sab'a idha balagha sab'a sinin to command your children to pray when they have reached the age of seven. When they have reached the age of seven, command them to pray. And if they reach uh, 10 years old, yeah, then discipline him as relates to it, meaning if he doesn't pray. Ma'am, just like Imam, uh, just like Ali radiallahu ta'ala, and who he said is to, is to do what? Is to reprimand them and educate them. Okay? So when they reach the age of seven, then we start to teach them and educate them about the salah. Now we start to educate them and to teach them about the about the salah. Right. And when they reach the age of ten, if they're not praying after we've spent all of them three years acclimating them to the prayer, teaching them the rules and regulations of the prayer, teach them how to make wudu, teach them how to pray, teach them what to say in each in each position, so on and so forth. Now, when they reach the age of ten, they know how to pray and they don't pray, then we have to discipline them for not praying. So this is something that is a must and something that is very important that we, we understand. وَقَالَ الْفُقَهَا And the fuqaha, they also, they, they mentioned, they said, وَهَكَذَا فِي الصَّوْمِ They said, and likewise, you should do the same as relates to the fasting. نعم. لِيَكُونَ ذَلِكَ تَمْرِينًا لَهُ عَلَى الْعِبَادَةِ so, so that this can be a lesson for them as relates to the worship, training them, acclimating them to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Teaching them these life skills, this is of utmost importance. Ma'am, but the the fuqaha they mention they say, "Like ya bilugha, wa huwa mustamirun ala al-ibada, wa taat illa, wa mujanaba al-ma'asiyah, wa turk al-munkar." So that they are reared, they are raised while they are acclimated, while they are used to. Obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, establishing the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obeying Allah jalla wa'ala, staying away from the sins and the transgression and leaving off those things that are disliked, those things that are hated, the sins, ma'am, that they grow up and that they are upon this. This is important and a must that we rear our children like this and that we take time and we put focus and emphasis on our families because how unfortunate is it the case that we busy ourselves with so many other things and we give so many other people our attention and we prioritize other people to the detriment of our own families. So we're there and other people... Yeah, and he, we're talking to them and educating them about all these intricate matters and so on and so forth and then our families don't know the basics. This is... A problem this is not right this is not right so it is important for all of us that we pay attention to our families how unfortunate and how idiotic is it for us to get so immersed in issues that are not going to benefit us in the hereafter but if anything they may harm us in the hereafter and we become like ulama right we become like scholars in these affairs and to the neglect of our family and things that are going on with them they don't even know tashahud. They don't even know the adhkar of the morning and of the evening. That, that, that adhkar that will safeguard them from the shayateen, from the shaytan. They don't know the adhkar of leaving the home. Naam, that will, is a protection for them from the, the shaytan. We don't, we, they don't know that type of stuff. And we letting our families go outside so that they can be attacked by the shayateen. We letting our families go throughout the day so that they can be attacked by the shaytan. They are not equipped because the shaytan is going to fight them and attack them regardless, whether they're equipped or not, whether they can fight back or not, whether they got, whether they armed themselves with the dhikr of Allah or not. But we're going to let them go out there. We ain't worried about that because Sheikh so-and-so says something about Sheikh so-and-so and that's what we all worried about. Allah musta'an. We let our children imitate these kuffar and they're reared upon this way, singing the jingles 
for their favorite cartoon or those things that they're watching and so on and so forth. And that same child doesn't know Al-Fatiha. If they can memorize the jingle for the song of this person or this cartoon or what have you, then they can memorize Quran. Naam? They can memorize Quran. But we find, no, they don't know the Quran. They don't know none of that. But they know the jingle for this thing and the jingle for that thing. Allah musta'an, this is a problem. They don't know how to say la ilaha illallah, but they can sing a jingle to a commercial or to the intro to their cartoon. Nursery rhymes. But they don't know how to say la ilaha illallah, let alone knows what it means. They don't know how to say Muhammad Rasulullah, let alone, let alone what it means. They can tell you about this character and this video game and that character and this cartoon and this character and that anime and so on and so forth, but they don't know about the Sahaba. They don't know about the Sahaba. They don't know who Abu Bakr is, but they know who this person is in this, in this anime cartoon. Allah musta'an. And then we wonder why we see what we see in our ummah. Then we wonder why we are subjected. Wonder why we are so far away from our religion. If this is the type of generation that we're going to raise, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to continue to be humiliated. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told us what is going to happen. Sallallahu alaykum dhullan hatta tarji'u ladinikum. Allah Ta'ala will put upon us humiliation until we return to our religion. How are we going to return to our religion when we raise little kids that can sing the song to this and that cartoon and anime and whatever the case is? And but they don't know how to say La ilaha illallah. They don't know how to recite Al Fatiha. They don't know Ayat Al Kursi. Yes, salam. They don't know the basics of their religion, but they know in depth and in detail about all this. Stuff that's going to destroy them. They, they don't know about the Sahaba, but they know about character so and so, and actor so and so, and entertainer so and so, and rapper such and such, and so on and so forth. Of course, they're not going to take the Sahaba as role models. They don't even know them. Of course, they're going to take little this and baby that as their role models because they know them. They look up to them. They think there's something good about them. When the opposite is true, there's nothing good about them. They are horrible, despicable, low-life individuals. So who cares? Our kids care. Because that's how we're raising them. So if we really want to be successful and we really want to see this humiliation lifted, we have to start raising a generation of people that have a love for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that love Allah, have a love for Allah, love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, love for the Sahaba, love for the the, 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 the scholars and, and, and the righteous figures from the past and so on and so forth, they have respect for knowledge and a love for knowledge and, 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 and eagerness to seek knowledge and to implement the knowledge. That love that which is good, that love being a Muslim and what it means to be a Muslim and looking like a Muslim and talking like a Muslim and dressing like a Muslim. Not a generation that want to look like little this and baby that and, you know, come on. Allah musta'an. Hatta tarji'u ila dinikum until we return to our religion. It starts at home, brothers. It starts at home, sisters. It starts with yourself. That's why Allah Ta'ala says, Ku and Fusa kum wa ahli kum nara. Start with yourself. Because if you're destroyed, how are you going to save someone else? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.